Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I'm coming at you with another Wargaming in Miniature video. In this video, I'm going to show you a technique on how to paint your armored vehicles using household spray paints and create great camouflage patterns using spray paints. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to move this model out of the way and we're going to pull this up. Now what you see here is 3M painter's tape. This is the really wide stuff. This is like an inch and a half. Uh, and I tore off some pieces to put on some wax paper. Okay, I'm going to put this piece of paper underneath because I'm going to draw on this. All right, now what we're making using the 3M painter's tape is we're making stencils, but not your traditional stencils. Uh, you know, like normally a stencil is like a piece of paper or cardstock or cardboard, and you cut out a pattern and you cut it out, then you hold it over the model and you spray through the template onto the model. And that will create a result similar to this like you'll see you'll I don't know if that's in focus or not but you'll see uh, like a little bit of overspray and it won't be as pronounced on this model what we're going to be doing is the ambush camouflage pattern and the transitions from one color to the next are going to be distinct they're going to be sharp Okay, so we want to have the stencil actually affixed to the model. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw squiggly wild lines on this, and we're going to make multiple little pieces of, um, what's the word, of the stencil. Okay, so let me, let me kind of explain before I start drawing, before I start cutting anything out. What we're going to also be doing is we're going to be doing multiple spray levels on this. Three levels, really. We're going to use the mustard color, which I've already sprayed. I'm going to apply stencils leaving gaps so you can see the... Whatever stencil I place on top of the mustard is going to prevent paint from covering the mustard. And then we'll spray it with a brown. We're going to spray it with just your traditional brown. And then I'm going to place additional stencils. I'm not going to peel the first stencils off. I'm just going to apply additional stencils. And then we will spray again with Hunter's Club, which is a which is kind of a green, a dark green color. Okay, and once that's all dry, I'm going to pull the brown stencils and the tan stent, uh, the, the mustard stencils off, and then what you'll have is three tones. So let's go ahead and draw some stencils. And I think I could probably get two patterns per each of these strips. I wasn't sure exactly how many I would need for this Puma, but we're going to figure it out as we go. And I don't want them to be straight. I don't want them to be fat or thin. I just want them to be just right. You know, I don't know. You know. So. Trying to get my pen to work. And then you get a pattern something like that. And I could probably do a bunch of those. Hell, I don't even really need to draw them. I'm just giving myself a general idea when I go to cut them out what pattern I want them to look, look like. Yeah, I'm thinking one is going to be enough and there's a long one I don't know if I'm going to need a long one so if I need to create any more after that I will uh, and with it still on the wax paper we're just going to cut it out 
Okay, give me a second once I get all these cut out. We'll be back. All right, now when we place these stencils on here, I'm going to place it on covering up the tires and the uh, ammo. I mean, not the ammo, the uh, fuel canisters or water canisters. I'm also going to be covering up like uh, the turret as well as basically I'm covering everything. And then when I peel off all the tape and the camouflage patterns underneath, then I will go back and I'll paint the uh, fuel canisters and the shovels and stuff like that. Uh, the appropriate colors. Okay, now knowing that uh, the mustard is the bottom coat, we want to cover about one third of the model. Now, if you want more mustard showing, then you would cover a little bit more than one third. If you want less mustard showing, you'd cover more than one third. But in this case, I'm only going to cover about one third of the model. And I'm thinking I'm going to lay this piece across like that. Now it's not going to reach because I'm going to fold it and bend it according to the model. It might end halfway over there, but that's okay. Now what we do is we peel off the wax paper. It's like a sticker now. We just created our own little stickers. This piece just peels off. Being careful not to tear the painter's tape. Now why do I use painter's tape? Well because it's got, it's sticky, but it's not so sticky that you can't peel it off. It's like a very easy stick, if that makes, I don't know how it makes sense on that. but. Okay, so let's start this off by putting it like right there. Now, I'm trying to form fit the sticker to the model, right? Okay, we're going to and we're going to press it down against the model over the corners. Mm. Didn't like that. There we go. There we go. Over the wheels. Back up onto the model there. That's fine. Get it to get down in all the little cracks that you can. You're not going to be able to get everything. Turret. You see how that wants to come back on it? That's fine. You don't want the spray to get up underneath. So you got to make sure that you apply enough pressure so that the stickiness of this painter's tape stays. And it's okay for it to droop down like that, that's fine. Okay, so when I spray this, this piece right here is gonna stay mustard colored. Now do I, I wanna put another piece, maybe, Yeah, maybe right there. Okay, so we're going to... All right, now I peel this off. It's okay if the wax paper tears, because you're going to throw that away. All right. So I want to have this little extra loop kind of go over the back side. Kind of like it's 
Actually, I keep forgetting that I'm only trying to cover one third of this. I don't want to cover more than a third because I still have brown and green that has to be painted onto this model. I want to do that. Yeah, let's do that. And using my fingernail, I probably could get a toothpick or whatever and make sure that it fits down into all the little cracks. Now see, I'm only covering up like half of the tire there so that can get some brown or green depending on how I lay the next stencil down this off. I think what I was going to do was something like this. Okay, these ammo cans here give me a little grief. But you know what? I'm going to be repainting those ammo cans anyway. Okay, so that's all going to be tan. So now I'm going to spray this right here with the brown. Okay, without putting these stencils on. But here, let me go spray this brown, and then I'll be right See back. here that it's painted brown. Now, I let this sit and dry for a little while, uh, 30 minutes or so, before I go to stick any of my new stencils on. I'm peeling this off, you know, just like I normally did. Now, when you go to apply your second layer of stencils, this is... Uh, you want to cover the brown portions that you want to keep, but you also uh, want to leave enough open so that when you spray the green, it'll be on the model, if all of that makes any sense to you. Um, so what I do is I tend to overlap some of the stencils uh, just to make sure, and then... I didn't like the way that looked. Okay. We're going to lay that right there. And you don't, it doesn't matter if you cover over some of the uh, under stencil. It just means that the brown and the mustard that you painted originally will now. Uh, be right up against each other. Okay. Now I did tear the stencil because I wanted it to go around this antenna, this feeler. Okay, so there's one stencil in the back. Uh, yeah, I think I like that. Now 
Now again, when you put the second layer of stencils on, you got to make sure that you're putting it on dry paint. Because when you peel it off in the end, you don't want the paint coming off with it. Okay, I think that's good. Let's go spray it some green, and then I'll be right back. All right, now before this is fully dry, I'm going to go ahead and peel uh, the stencils off so that, and then I'm going to allow it to dry. So I put one on the turret, the uh, barrel, back when it was tan, and then I forgot to do one when it was brown, but that's okay. looking for places where I can get to the stencil without any difficulties. I do believe I peeled all the stencils off. Okay, now remember, this is not finished. I don't like the shine from the green. I'm gonna fix that with a, a dull coat. But, uh, yeah, look at that. Now I still have more work to do on this. So what I'm gonna do is let this dry for another 10, 15 minutes. Then I'm going to hit it with a dull coat. And then we're going to get to actually painting this. And I'm going to paint this at my right, desk. Guys, we are back. We've got the dull coat. It's already painted on there. As I'm planning on doing this in ambush camouflage, ambush is basically P dot camouflage. It's just for tanks. And so we've got uh, our three primary colors uh, and then contrast those three primary colors we've got splinter blotches one splinter blotches two and german camo beige uh, these colors are going to go on top of these other colors in a contrast i wrote down a little key for me so i don't forget the green is going to go on top of the brown the tan is going to go on top of the green and then the brown is going to go on top of the tan. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with, and these are all the other colors that I will be using to paint this. Let's go ahead and get started with the Splinter Blotches 1. All right, now I'm using a 2 brush. It's round. It's got a nice tip on it. But these blotches are going to be fairly large dots. Not like the, not like a, an SS Troopers uniform because this is a tank so it's got to be bigger spots. They're basically just dots though.
All right, so now that we got that splinter blotches green, you notice the little dots all over the place. Uh, now we're going to do German camo beige, and we're going to do that in the green. All right, so... And I do, I do deliberately make them in different sizes. So I don't stress over what size I make the three little dots. And then what I do, once I got the three dot series all over a camo area, then what I do is I go and put a dot in between all of them basically just filling any of the large voids, any area that might look like it just needs an extra dot. And then I also do green. All right, as you can see, we got the tan on top of the green. Now we're gonna go ahead and use splinter blotches too on the mustard. And we're going to do it basically in the exact same way that we did all the others. We're just going to put dots, spread them out, All right, once I get all the uh, brown dots on the tan, I'll be right back. All right, now here we go. Doesn't that look awesome? Now we're not completely done because obviously I've got to do all the detail work on all the pieces on the armor. So we're going to start off with the tires. I'm going to go ahead and paint those a charcoal cover color. I'm not going to paint them black like you would maybe expect on a tire, uh, but rubber is not black. It's more of a super dark gray. So I'm going to paint it charcoal. All right, guys, now this is what the turnout of the tires will look like. You notice how they're kind of a, a really dark gray. Uh, that's great for your tires. You don't use black. And uh, now that we're going to move on to the next color, which I'm going to use a really dark green. It's called Black Green from Poly S. And we're going to paint the jack and the uh, water cans and the gas cans. All right, guys, uh, while that green is, that dark green is drying, you can kind of see the effect that it had. 
Now we're going to, uh, there's wood on like the shovels and this axe back here and this shovel over here. Uh, those handles need to be wood color. So we're going to use wood brown. Now I went and grabbed a smaller brush. This is a 5-0. So that the point. All right, the next color we're going to use is gunmetal gray, and that's there's only a couple of things on here that is gunmetal, so we're just going to use a very small drop. The shovels. Now the shovels you can paint them black if you prefer. Now there is a, a line, mold line, that crosses over. That's actually a strap or a bar or something that would actually hold the uh, shovel in place. And it would be part of the camouflage, so just paint around it. Same thing with the one in the back. All right, it's been a couple of minutes. Now what I'm going to do is we're, I put five drops of strong tone and it looks like I put three drops of water in there. That's more than 50% water. I'm going to go ahead and drop a couple more drops of Strong Tone because I wanted... about a six to four. Um, that's all right. We got, we got seven to three. That's pretty good. All right. So now I'm just going to wash the entire model. We're going to... Just like you do on a, just like you do on a uh, figure, we're gonna wash this entire thing. Uh, I think I'm gonna take the turret off and wash it separately. I don't think that's gonna be enough just to do half the model. Tanks must need a lot more wash. Yep, I can see that now. All right, we're going to do a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then three, two, three. A little bit of a stir. And then we're going to wash. This entire model. Mainly so that all of the details of the model will stand out. Trying not to let it pool up anywhere, not too heavily anywhere. little 
extra on the vents by the engine. Okay, the whole thing is covered in wash, except for the turret. I don't think I need that many drops, maybe. Maybe three and two. No, three and one. And trying not to let it pool up anywhere. Not too heavy, anyway. That looks good, that looks good. Right, we're going to let this dry and then we'll be back. All right, we're going to go ahead and start putting some decals on. You probably didn't hear any of that conversation I had before. Uh, okay, so we're going to soak the decals in the water for about a minute. Before I do that, I'm going to take some Aero Set. It's a, it's a setting solution. What I do is I apply it over the area, which I already did. Uh, and then we're going to let the, once the number starts to move around on the paper, then it's ready to be slid off onto the model. Okay, so I'm going to number this vehicle 112. Uh, that means, those three numbers mean something on, in the German Army. You've got one is the first company, one is the first platoon and two means it's the second vehicle in that platoon. Okay, the one starting to slide. Reach in with my almost need to elevate it a little bit so I can get to it. You can see it sliding really slowly. Okay. 
Now using water, or I should say a wet brush, go ahead and maneuver that slide back into position where I want it. Twelve looks good. All right. So now using a paper towel, press, basically soak up all the water that's around. Very soft, gentle. And now what I do is I actually press hard on there. Well, not hard, but I apply a little bit of pressure to get all the water out of it. And also, you know, any air bubbles or anything like that. Second cross in. Okay, we're going to see if this cross is moving. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, now we're going to put the cross in front of those numbers. All the way up against the smoke dischargers. We're going to bring it down a little bit. There you go, just like that. And again, absorb the water. The okay, majority of the water is absorbed. a little bit of pressure with your thumb soak some of the water off and then apply some pressure dry most of this brush off because there's something I wanted to do before we move on to the next step which is the division symbol and the battalion symbol okay this arrow set not only do you coat the model underneath give it kind of a base primer coat basically with it but you also apply it over the decals because what it'll do is it'll melt the decal so be gentle into the model or into the it'll basically melt it into position okay and we do the same thing on the other side Okay, and we let that sit for a moment. <clears throat> now, one of the two of the places that I want to put decals are on the left side of the bumper right here. I'm going to prime that. And then also on the right side of the bumper, I want to prime that as well. Okay. Okay, the left side. And the right side.
right now just to let you know I went ahead and hit it with a little bit of uh, strong tone wash over the numbers and the logos just to bring that white down so it wasn't so glaringly bright all right so now let's take a close-up look at this model and see if you like it All right, here we go. We got um, dots, camouflage, wash down in the cracks, the numbers. I'm liking it. Connaissance, Panzer Lear. And then on the table, at arm's length, looks pretty good. All right, guys, thanks for coming out and checking out this alternative painting technique with the stencils. And uh, tell me if you like it. Tell me if that's something you might be able to use yourself. Uh, now, I plan to do, I don't know, five or six different half tracks and tanks. I'm going to stencil them all at the same time, spray them, stencil them, spray them. That way I get them all knocked out at the same time. All right, guys. Um, I'll catch you next time.